What's going on guys, my name is Kyle and welcome back. Today, we're gonna paint some cars, virtually. <laughs> now I love me some iRacing and one of the coolest things about iRacing is you can have custom liveries. Everyone can have their own and it's freaking sick. So today, we're gonna go through how to do that because it's, it's not as hard as you think it would be. So there's pretty much two ways you can make your livery for iRacing. You can make a file, which we'll go through soon, and then upload that to the root folder of iRacing. That will then show your livery in the sim. The problem doing it that way is only you can see the livery. So if you're doing offline stuff, or you're doing replays or whatever, and just you need to see it, uh, it works well. But if you want other people online to see it, it's not gonna work so well. So there's another option, which is called trading paints. And that's essentially what we're gonna talk about today because it's the best way, in my opinion, to get your iRacing liveries. And if you don't use it already, you probably should because it's the easiest way to get your livery on your car and see everybody else's liveries that are on the grid. It works. <laughs> now, if you are using trading paints and you don't wanna go through the effort of making your own livery, you can go to their website and scroll through all of the pre-made ones that people have made and submitted. You can add whatever you want to whatever car you're racing with and it's as simple as clicking some buttons. If you wanna find a livery for a car that you're racing with at the moment, you can go to the showroom tab on the website and scroll down until you find something you like. If you wanna filter through different cars or anything along those lines, click cars. Let's say we wanna find one for the Ford Fiesta. You click the Ford Fiesta, you scroll down, and all of these liveries are ready and available. All you literally need to do is click one, it'll open up the livery, and then click race this paint. It'll add it to that car. The next time you load into iRacing, trading paints will update, and this livery will be on your car. It's as simple as that. And the best thing about it, it's free. So let's go back into cars and let's find the Honda Civic because this is the car that we're gonna make a livery for today. So if you click the Civic, you can scroll through and see all of the liveries that are already ready to go. You've got Taco Bell liveries, you've got a Kirby livery, a taxi livery, and there's a bunch to choose from. But today, we're gonna make our own livery. I wanna make one just for us and put that on the car because they're obviously gonna be way better than these. A hundred percent. So because we're making our own livery, you will need a program that's gonna help you make that livery. I'm gonna use Photoshop because I already have it and I know how to use it, but if you don't have Photoshop, don't stress. You can use a program called GIMP. There are other things out there that will allow you to do the same thing, but GIMP is a free piece of software that you don't have to pay for and you can still get really good results. But for today's purpose, I'm gonna use Photoshop. So the first step in making your own livery is getting the template for the car you wanna make a livery for. So what we're gonna do is go up to the top of the Trading Paints website, see Paint Cars and click Painting Templates. This is gonna have a full list of all the templates for the cars. You just need to click them and download them. Yeah, it's, it's very easy, it's very simple. So we're gonna scroll down here and we're gonna find the Honda Civic in the road car section, which will be right here, Honda Civic Type R. We're just gonna click that, it'll automatically start downloading, and once that's downloaded, we need to export that archive file and get the Photoshop file. Now that we have the file downloaded, we're gonna right click it, zip, extract here. So we're gonna extract the file from the archive into our folder, and you can see now we have our Photoshop File. So we're going to double click this, open up Photoshop, and get ready to start editing. So after you spend about 35 minutes updating Photoshop so it'll actually open the file, this is what you come to. So this is what the template looks like when you open it for the first time. So if you're going to look on the right hand side straight away, you're going to see there's three separate folders. So you have your spec map, which is going to handle your metallics and your matte finishes of the car. But for now, uh, we're going to leave that alone. That's a totally different video altogether. Uh, you've got the red folder, which says turn off before exporting. So if we open that up, you can see you've got a wire here, which if you turn on, you'll see the curvature of the car. So this will show you exactly what the parts are going to do when they're on the car, how they mold, where they go. You can see the handles here for the doors. It, it gives you a lot more information than you would see without having that on. So if we turn it off again. You're so, you don't see where the door seams are. You don't see where the hood is. Like you can't really tell where the curved is on a lot of these body parts. So we're gonna keep that on for now just to see where everything is. Now uh, underneath that you have mask. So if you uncheck and check that, you can see it just gets rid of the blank areas. So it's only gonna apply a mask as to where the color is physically gonna show on the car. So because we have the wire on, it makes it a lot easier to tell. But if the wire was off, 
you wouldn't really see what is going on. So if you turn the mask on, then you would know that this is the bonnet, this is the roof, you've got doors either side. It just makes it a lot easier to tell uh, what is actually happening with the car. So for me right now, we're going to turn on the wire and the mask just to see what everything looks like. Uh, underneath that, we have number blocks. So if you click that to turn it on, you can see exactly where your number is going to be shown when you load into iRacing and they auto put on the, the number for your car. That's where they're going to sit. So you have one on the back and then one on either side. So for now, we're going to turn those off. Underneath that, you have sponsor blocks. So the green parts and the yellow parts, that's where you have your sponsor parts. So where you got to paint a car within iRacing, you have sponsor one and sponsor two. The bigger one obviously being the sponsor one and the yellow one is sponsor two. So if you were to put, you know, iRacing sponsors on your livery, then it would just go on top in these parts. But we're going to get rid of that as well because we don't want those. Uh, car mandatory. These are all the little individual parts underneath. So for that, we're going to keep it as exactly as it is like this. So we're going to uh, close that little folder and then we're going to open up the paintable area. So underneath the paintable area, you can see we have pit box, which is just down here in the bottom left hand side. And that shows the pit box color. We're going to keep that on exactly as it is right now. Uh, above that, we have color change logo. So you can't really see, it's just a little part right here, nothing too crazy. Uh, we're going to keep that on because it doesn't really do too much. And then car decal. So you can see if we turn that on and off, it gets rid of all of the car decal logos. So the Michelin logos, all of these little logos here, it gets rid of them if we turn them off. So for me, for today, what we're going to do is we're going to turn off the car decals because I want something that's just really plain, really basic for the sake of getting this uh, organized and you guys can see exactly what you need to do. So underneath those three sections, you've got another little folder that says car patterns. So if we have, uh, we open this one up, you can see there's a bunch of individual patterns inside that folder. So that whole folder is turned off right now. If we turned it on, you would see that there's already a livery applied. So this is car pattern 0001. If we turn that one off, it'll then show the next car pattern. You turn that one off, it'll then show the next car pattern. So these can sometimes be a really good base to use. If you want to use one of the iRacing's sort of base paints, then you can then modify and change to your own, uh, or you can just do your own. But then again, like I said, you can turn all of these off, cycle through them, see what is going to give you a good base to start with, and then you can build up from there. If you want to go a little bit of a different way, you can, but at least you know that there's options there for you if you feel so inclined. Uh, so we're going to turn these ones off because I don't want to use any of them today, but like I said, at least we know that they're there. Uh, underneath the car patterns, we have our base. So this is just the base color. So it's the very, very bottom layer, and it sits underneath everything. So this is just your base color. You can double click this if you so wanted to, uh, and you can change the, the color of it. You can change the opacity. You can change whatever you want. Uh, what I like to do is I just like to turn this one off. I like to grab a rectangular shape make a rectangle over the top of the whole canvas. You'll see there's a little rectangle layer. And then we'll drag that all the way down to the bottom and put it just above the base. And then for me, all I need to do is double click that square. You'll get your color selected tool. And then we can just pick any color that we want to pick. And it'll change the base color of the car, no matter what we want to do. So I think for this one, we're going to make this... What color should we make this one? I think we'll make it like a... Maybe a black, I guess. Let's just make this one black for the time being. So we have a black Honda Civic. Uh, pretty straightforward. So again, you at least now have a base and we can export this as is. If we wanted to export it just like it is with nothing else, you'll get a totally black, blacked out Civic. That's it. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to do that. So I'm going to close this little folder and you can see the wire and the mask is still uh, on top of everything. So you can notice here it says turn off before exporting TGA. So we're going to turn this off. And then literally all it shows is a black screen. If you've done other designs, you've done other things uh, like this pattern, I may as well show you that because it's going to make more sense. If we turn on this pattern, you can see here, and then if I turn off that TGA, then it's going to show everything. So it's going to show uh, all of your designs, everything where it's going to be, and that's what you export. This is what you use for your car, and then iRacing does all the back work. So we're going to turn this back on, we're going to turn off that pattern, and then just have our black livery. We're going to turn that red folder off before we export, and then what you need to do is go up to the top, click File. For me, in Photoshop, for some reason, I have to go save a copy, and then you go down here, this little second section, and you want to find what's called a TGA or a Targa file, one right here and then we're gonna call this a uh, we'll just call this Honda Civic Type R uh, I'm just gonna say black easy peasy and now you click save so it's gonna save that as a file so you're gonna get this little option here a 16-bit 
24-bit, 32-bit. I'm just going to go 24-bit and click OK. And then what this will do is this will save it as a TGA file. You can see that one right there. So now the easiest thing that you need to do to get this into iRacing is go back to Trading Paint and upload this to that certain car. We'll go through that now. It's really easy. So jump back over to Trading Paint and you can see the little middle tab here. Showroom, My Paints, and Paint Cars. You want to go to My Paints and click what I'm racing and this will bring up a list of all of the cars in iRacing and then you can choose which one you want to change and what you want to do so I'm gonna go Civic right here click Honda Civic type R and this will bring up uh, the uh, Honda Civic so it's gonna show there's nothing here because we haven't got a paint loaded into this one already you're gonna click paint options choose new paint and then we're gonna upload a paint so far so good we're all on the same page you want to upload this and then you want to select a file. We want to go to the folder that we saved our target file in. We want to click that and we want to click open. Now this is going to upload it. You can see it's going through it slowly. It's a 12 megabyte file and this is going to upload this paint into iRacing or into Trading Paint, sorry. And then when we open up iRacing, it will then load into iRacing. So let's just, we'll go one step at a time. As soon as this finished uploading, you'll see it'll fill this section back here. Waiting and waiting. Okay, all good to go. Click got it. It'll then reload and then you should see right here a totally black Civic The Honda logos are still down there, but you can see it applies its own mask from here You can do different things like you know adding uh, the, the decal stamp that we took off So it'll have the Michelin banner as well as all the other individual things which again we don't want I'm just gonna do it plain black for now just to get a bit of an idea as to what the car actually looks like but so far, that's it. We've got a fully blacked out Civic. That should be ready to go the next time we open iRacing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up iRacing. We'll get Trading Paints loaded and download this new livery. And then it should be good to have a look at the Civic in iRacing. So now that you have your livery uploaded to Trading Paints, all you need to do is come into iRacing, click My Content. You want to go to your cars and search the car that you're after. So we're going to type in Civic. I'm going to go right here. That was an old paint that we had on there. We're going to click paint car and it should load the black livery. Should. Please work. There we go. Hey, easy. Simple as that. So we have the black livery loaded into iRacing. So that's what we've done so far. Now, if you go through your cars and your livery isn't loaded, what you need to do is go into a test drive. So you just click into go racing. Click test drive, just load onto a small track with the car and that'll give Trading Paints an opportunity to refresh and download that paint onto the car so you're good to go. Now, if there's a lot of changes that you want to make to your livery and you want to make some tweaks and you want to just change a couple of things to make it suit you better, one thing that I definitely do suggest is go into your documents and find your iRacing folder. So if you go to documents and then click your iRacing folder, you'll see there's a couple of folders within that. So you click paint and then you want to type H for Honda and you'll see there's a folder here saying Honda Civic type are. So what you need to do is take the same file that we uploaded to Trading Paints and you can put it in this folder. Now you do need to change the name a little bit so it needs to have your iRacing customer number. So mine will say car underscore my customer number. Yours is going to be different but I can put it into this folder and it will automatically update within iRacing without having to re-upload files into the Trading Paints website. So let's jump back into Photoshop and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. We're going to put the red folder back on to see exactly what the car looks like and what we're going to do is we're going to just add a couple of random things to this livery uh, for the time being. So we're going to go into our rectangle layer. Uh, we're going to rasterize that so I can paint things on it. You don't have to do this, but this is just something that I'm going to use as a demonstration. Uh, we're going to find just some random colors. I'm going to make this a much bigger blob. And we're just going to blob some some random colors around. Uh, just some dots. There we go. We'll keep some black coming through there as well. I might even just do like a, a couple of black uh, circles. Uh, perfect. Okay. Now that we've got this livery done, uh, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to uncheck the red box so it'll show you exactly what our paint is going to look like in its raw form. We're going to go File, Save a Copy. And what we're going to do now is we're going to find our Documents folder and go straight to our iRacing folder. So we're going to click Documents. We're going to go iRacing. We're going to go back into the Paint folder. And then same deal. We're going to type H to find the Honda Civic folder. Double click that. And then we're going to go into that drop down and change it from a Photoshop file into a Targa file. And then you'll see there our original livery, just the plain black one, is in there from earlier. So we're going to click that 
and we're going to replace that whole thing. So it'll say, yes, we want to replace it. We want to export it as a 24 bits per pixel. And now that that's uploaded, that's already in that folder, exported, ready to go. We can go back into iRacing, click my content. We're going to type in Civic, same as we did earlier. Click on the Civic, click paint car, and it should load in with all of the colorful dots. Hopefully, uh, I'm going to look like an idiot if it doesn't. There you go. Plain and simple, look at that. It doesn't honestly get much better than that. But this is obviously not what the livery I want it to look like is gonna look like, but it gives you a really good idea of how you can make a heap of small tweaks and it's not gonna affect your Trading Paints upload. So if we go back to Trading Paints, you can see that the upload that we have here in Trading Paints is still the fully black livery. So I can tweak this as many times as I want. I can go back into Photoshop, make a couple of changes. Let's say for example, I wanna make the whole thing white. Uh, all we need to do is just make the whole background white, simple as that. We're going to bring that back down again, make a smaller one. We're going to go File, Save a Copy. It's going to go straight back into our, uh, we want to click Targa. It's going to go straight back into our documents. We want to click iRacing. We want to go Paint, uh, type in H for Honda, Honda Civic Type R. We're going to double click this, cover go over, over this, uh, replace it, yes, same name. 24 bits per pixel, it's uploaded, we go back into iRacing, and then we have a white livery. You can do this as many times as you want to get the livery that you like, but it's very straightforward. Once you've got a livery that you're totally happy with, all you need to do is go into the documents folder, back into iRacing, into paint, into the car, the one that we've been slowly changing to get our iRacing livery perfect, and you wanna upload that file to Trading Paints. Once you've got your final one finished, upload that to Trading Paints and then you're good to go. Everyone else is going to see exactly the same livery that you have and it all works. It's perfect. It's honestly as simple as that. So you can make as many changes, you can do whatever you want, you can make it as unique to you as you possibly want. If you're in Photoshop and you keep that little uh, red folder on, it does make it a hell of a lot easier to work out what parts of the car go where. But like I said, you can make this whatever you want. You can change this however you'd like. You can put whatever you want on there. Obviously, making sure that it's appropriate and not going to get you in trouble with iRacing, but it shouldn't be a problem. There's a lot of things that you can do and you can make them very unique to yourself. There are so many cool things that you can do to represent yourself and who you are and what you do and I think that's honestly one of the coolest things to be able to share that with everybody. So at least now you know how to do it. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. If you do have any questions or if you're stuck or if I didn't answer something please let me know. I'm more than happy to help as best as I possibly can. I am by no means an expert but I'll try my best to help you. If you guys like this video don't forget to leave it a thumbs up. Also subscribe. I post new videos every single week and you don't want to miss it. For the last nine months, we've been doing something called the Spud Cup. It's a community league racing event that we do in iRacing every single week. If you want to find out more information to that, I'll leave a link to our Discord in the description below that has a bunch of information where drivers talk, everybody discusses the race schedule. There's a bunch of cool stuff in there if you feel so inclined and do want to join, you're very, very welcome to. We also do have videos on a separate YouTube channel every single Spud Cup race weekend. You can go to the Spud Cup, on YouTube, again, the link will be in the description, but every single race weekend has a full replay commentary if you want to go back and watch any of the races that have happened so far. You're very welcome to. We've only got Season 3 and the start of Season 4, but there's hours of viewing excitement. <laughs> if you want to find us on any of our other social media, all the links will be in the description, but other than that, I'm going to leave you to it. I will see you in the next one. And bye! <laughs>